This video is a follow-up video to one I did earlier on showing how you can reclaim lithium cells, fully rechargeable lithium cells, from these items that are discarded on the streets of, well, every big city. I was really stunned when I came to Glasgow. First, I noticed that the packages they come in, when people buy these things, I can't actually name them because YouTube does not like their original intended purpose. Uh, but when you buy these devices, the just the people buying them just throw the box into the gutter. They just they were everywhere, and then once they've got their device, they open it up, take it out to use it, and they just discard the foil as well. And then they discard the little silicon cap, and then off they go on their merry way with their vapor. So um, I came across. Initially, on like the first couple of days, I came across three. This pink one had been thrown out of a car window and was lying uh, at the side of the road. Uh, this one, I think it was, was lying in a planter at the train station. And this one was lying on the ground at a park. I'm not sure how safe it is if a dog gets hold of these and it actually manages to open them. I'm, I'd be more worried about the the chemical that's used in these, that they're, they're the reason people use them. But anyway, let's get straight to the chase. I'll show you what's inside these and how to reclaim that cell. Now, I found that many of these are quite difficult to open, but it varies. Uh, ideally, you want to take this end cap off and then take this one off. And the best way I've found for the mouth end is to just do this. Apply a bit of pressure, alternate sides until it comes off. And what you actually have then is the mouthpiece with a little absorbent wick material in it. This can be sterilized if you want to use it for its intended application. This was much harder. It depends on the type, but uh, you generally, a spudger would be in handy. I don't have a spudger here, but you can also use a pair of pliers rather destructively. It's going to chew it up. But if you're just getting the lithium cell, uh, that doesn't matter. But you want to just wiggle it until it actually comes out. You could, technically speaking, refill these if you wanted. Let me shove a screwdriver up the end of this. Oh, that's not going to fit. Uh, to shove the contents out. So here's the, the bounty that we're looking for. This is a generous 550 milliamp hour lithium cell. That is just gold because uh, these things tend to they use them and then they're disposable, which is shocking for something with a rechargeable cell. But they quite often have a, a fair bit of charge. It doesn't take them too low. It certainly doesn't go beyond the point the cell is likely to be unhappy about it. So the actual circuitry, it's all condensed down in here into this tiny little thing. It looks like a microphone, but it's actually a dedicated chip and pressure sensor. And it does everything. It drives a little LED in the back of it to make it sort of light up and show statuses and when it's run out, of the battery's running low. But also detects the person inhaling through this to actually uh, turn the MOSFET on that brings on a heater in this. And I'll show you the construction of these. When you want to recharge these... You can either, I mean, if you're just wanting it for the battery, you can take it out completely um, and then uh, desolder the wires because they've got little tabs on them that are solderable. But as supplied in the unit, and supposing you were wanting to reuse it for its original intended purpose, there's a bit of captain tape over each end for insulation, sometimes a little foam pad. And I made a charger based on the classic TP4056 uh, charging module. If you go on eBay and you search in USB TP4056, you will find just tons of these. Either just the dedicated chip in its own, or sometimes the protection MOSFET as well, which is really good in the chip, the DW01. The one thing you may have to do with this, by default, they tend to come with something like a 1.2000 ohm programming resistor for setting the current. That's about an amp. Uh, I prefer charging lithium cells at their uh, at 1C, which is their basically the rate of capacity. So in the case of this one, I changed it to a 2.2K resistor to uh, bring it down to 500 milliamps. The battery itself may have tape around it to indicate the volt, the which end is positive and which is negative. I think that's mainly aimed at the factory workers. And you can stick your crocodile clip on carefully, making sure you don't short things out. 
If it's not got the tape in it, double check anyway by uh, looking at the markings on the battery and you'll usually find they've got something like uh, it may be marked uh, with a plus and minus symbol at each end. Once you have connected your little recharging device, grab yourself a USB connector, plug it in, and this cell is now being recharged and it will terminate when it gets to about uh, 4.2 volts. Well, I should hope it would terminate when it gets to 4.2 volts. You don't want it going much higher. And that will basically reactivate the cell. And uh, well, either you can use it then your own projects or you could uh, then use it for its intended purpose by refilling it. This uh, liquid is getting everywhere. This is something I've refilled it with. It's not noxious. It's not nasty like the original stuff. I've got another thing with these. They're, they're coming from China and they've got flavorings, absolutely engulfing flavorings in them that are just like basically airborne candy. And I'm kind of concerned that the, the chemicals they're using to do that because many traditional devices and the little refill bottles of liquid you get have quite a coarse sensation. These do not have that coarse sensation. Are they using some sort of anaesthetic for the lungs? It just seems odd. God, it's absolutely stinking. The place, the whole place is stinking with my experiments. It smells like a, a fruit factory exploded. Right, okay. Uh, if you had a... Say you had a solar rechargeable light that you wanted to put one of these cells in as an alternative to the original cell in it that had failed or you wanted to use it in a head torch, keep in mind that these are by default don't come with a little protection circuit board. So make sure whatever device you use it in does have the charge regulation circuitry that will limit the current and stop it at 4.2 volts. Let's take a look inside some of the other ones. While this is charging, not that I'm really going to let it charge all the way during the video because that could take some time depending on the current state of charge. Here's another version called Drag Bar. And when you pull it out, this one has a smaller capsule and a very ungenerous battery. It's one of the least generous batteries of the lot, 400 milliamp hour. But having said that, if you want a 400 milliamp hour battery, that is quite good. This was quite hard to open, very destructive opening it. But then again, if you're just looking for the batteries, that's fine. This smock Novo Bar, uh, is quite interesting in that it's no glue, it's entirely friction fitted. I mean, these ones are friction fitted as well, but they're really pressed in hard. This one is a very interesting construction and it's the first of these ones with the flat cell. So this one is marked 1.81 watt hour, a rough guide to that, uh, 1.81 watt hour divided by the mid-range voltage, say 3.6, means it's going to be about 500 milliamp power. So a useful capacity. Um, this one, the construction is the same, but it's just sort of rectangular, as you may notice. And it uses that uh, rectangular cell. I'm not sure. Ultimately, the shape of cell you choose, you want, is uh, going to be determined by your application. Other devices, and this is where it gets really huge, this one, if I pop the end off this, is unusual. If I slide the guts out of this one, which opens in roughly the same way, it's got a much higher capacity, but look at the size of that cell. That is a 1.5 amp hour cell. That's huge. And likewise, the actual reservoir in it is massive as well. These things are designed to last longer. I'm not sure they're totally compliant with UK regulations. I'm not sure why the regulations limit the, the capacity of such things. But this one, eh, the sensor just pops out easily and it shows the little microphone -y type thing. It's not actually a microphone. It's a little membrane switch and it's got the little LED in the back as well. Very neat, very clever uh, compression of the design. But that's a very good sell. The other one I got just because I really wanted to know what rye bread taste. Why would they even make this? This is partly because they're coming from China. Some of their flavours are pretty odd and this one tastes like someone described it as rice pudding. I couldn't place it. Toasted rice pudding. Why does that, why is it called rye bread? Why would you even sell something called rye bread in the UK in this form? But again, 
this contains that very useful uh, 1.5 amp hour cell, 1,500 milliamp hour, not to be sneezed at. Uh, let's talk about these little capsules here. And if you're wanting to reuse them for theatre applications, for instance. So here is the construction of these. The clear body has a silicon end cap in each end. These silicone end caps here, I could just pull this out, couldn't I? To reveal it, what's inside. That little wick thing, this is going to make another mess. And then this absorbent material here. The silicon end caps of a little spigot or uh, hole to hold in place a fiberglass sleeve. The fiberglass sleeve is that typical woven fiberglass you'd normally find as a protection across uh, high temperature wires. And uh, about halfway down that is a little hole with a diagonal line going up. And the reason for the diagonal line is because they sit into that hole a heater wire that looks like this. Heater wire with a little bond, a little spot weld, and then thin uh, bare wire tails coming off. And in the middle of that is something like a sort of cotton wicking material that then gets squished over the side against the other padding material in here, the actual liquid holding material. And these wires then uh, go down and they go through the silicon base and they're usually sort of glued in place. They are in this one, they're glued in place. Another thing they do is want to stop that uh, opening up or just to stop it snagging when they put the outer sleeve down. They slide another little sleeve of the material down, the, the uh, fiberglass material, over that just to close up that little V-shape, that little slot that uh, lets them hook the filament in. It's quite an interesting construction. It's evolved greatly. The material around here is the wicking material. There's no loose liquid in these things. It's all soaked into that material. And technically speaking, if you recharged it like these ones, you could then get bottles of completely safe, non-nick uh, material. You could actually put just drizzle this in to make that uh, soak that again. Or if you wanted a really good visual effect, you could actually use just pure glycerin, which uh, is available from the local pharmacy. Uh, this is from Boots, and that produces a thick fog, but without any of the chemical flavorings and without any of the other special chemicals. Uh, anything else worth saying about these? Not really. Just if you see them lying in the street, uh, pick them up. Because, I mean, it just, it, 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 I can't believe how widespread they are now. I mean, these are just everywhere. It just seems to have taken off. I'm guessing it is the fact that they are using such strongly flavoured materials in them. But uh, that's uh, a handy source for these little lithium cells. I mean, they, they seem to be decent cells. They can put out a lot of current because they have to put out a lot of current to actually power a heating element in these. Oh, how does the heat element actually make the fog? Um, glycols and glycerin are hygroscopic. They always have a certain element of water in them. The water boils faster uh, at a lower temperature than the glycols and the glycerin, so that when the heating element heats it up, uh, the water boils, and because it's mixed through it at a sort of like molecular level, it shatters the glycol into lots of tiny droplets with the other elements, the flavours, things like that, and that's what creates the fog effect. So when you actually see this, it's not smoke that's coming out. It is uh, just a fog of tiny droplets, just like actual airborne fog. But there we go. It's a useful source of cells. I did notice, though, for the number of wrappers I saw knocking about, I did not see as many of these. Are people putting them in the bins afterwards, or... Are other people picking them up from the side of the street? There's that certain element of, sort of blade runnishness to them that, you know, it's the future and these are like these chemical sticks that people are partaking of. And I could see people pick them up from the side of the street and recharging them with their own chemicals. Um, but they're quite unusual. Very refined product. Dirt cheap and ridiculous that they're just being basically bought and then discarded after a single use when that cell could take many more charges.